Each year the list of surviving World War II veterans shrinks and with them go the stories of their sacrifice. In South Australia there's a small number of men, mostly now in their 90s, who were held as prisoners of war in Germany. For years they believed that people misunderstood what they went through. But now work by an Adelaide academic seeks to put the record straight, as Mike Sexton reports. In winter time it got down to below 30. At times it, you, you took your thin old blanket you had, you'd wrap that around you. It's been 66 years since Ron Zvar was a prisoner of Stalag 4 near Dresden in Germany but he can still recall what life was like as a prisoner of war. Hunger was with you the whole time. Uh, you just felt if, if you let your mind roam, it would go to food. Ron Zvar was one of almost 8,500 Australians taken prisoner by the Germans during the Second World War. They endured everything from the physical pain of interrogation and bashings to the mental strain of boredom and self-loathing. You've let yourself down, you've let your mates down, you've left it, let country down. You went in and volunteered with great, good on you, mate, you useless son. That was what I felt. They survived on meagre rations and were forced to work for the enemy. A majority were in some kind of industrial detachment and that could be road building, railway work, uh, it could be working in a coal mine. Ralph Churches worked on farms in what is now Slovenia. He was always determined to escape so learned to speak German and curried favours by using coffee packets sent in Red Cross parcels. Now what Australian is going to bloody drink coffee or go to the bother of making coffee when he has tea? But boy oh boy could we black market with that coffee. Oh, look, they'd sell their backsides for it. Ralph Church has also befriended members of the communist resistance known as partisans. In 1904, he led one of the largest breakouts of the war when he successfully freed more than 90 men. I'd squared the ledger. I did not have for the rest of my life to carry the feeling of have, being a failure. I'd been a reasonable success indeed. That is why what's significant about it. The story of Ralph Church's escape has been recorded and it reads like a boy's own adventure. But his POW experience was rare. For many, the war left them damaged. It's quite common for them to have difficulties in relationships, uh, difficulties in settling down, just difficulties in dealing with the world which was so different from that which they'd experienced during those uh, long years of captivity. After being liberated, the POWs had time to recover before returning to Australia. By the time they did arrive home, the war with Japan ended, and with it came the full horror of the suffering of POWs there. Because of the sympathy for their comrades in the Pacific, the European POWs slipped home almost unnoticed. Uh, a month on the boat, nicely suntanned, we'd put on a bit of weight. We looked much the same as we would have done when we left Australia. So um, it was the hidden scars inside that were really the problem. So we, we never spoke about it. In the decades since, popular culture, most notably the hit TV series Hogan's Heroes, has portrayed spending time in German camps as something of a holiday, with little real recognition of what the men went through people have seen Hogan's Heroes, they've seen The Great Escape uh, and so they have a, an idea of it but an idea that comes through those sorts of media uh, which uh, are a bit misleading. In 2001 former prisoners of the Japanese were given compensation by the federal government but not those who were captured in Europe. There always has been a barrier between the two, there still is and even among the members, there's some Japanese POWs who've never spoken to a European POW. That, that feeling is still uh, there. It's, it's, not a, it's not a hate feeling, it's just, uh, well, you didn't put up with what we had to. Ronsvar gathered evidence and mounted a case on behalf of ex-European POWs that eventually won them the equivalent compensation. 
but a byproduct of his work was a collection of stories about the war, which was for many the first time they'd spoken of their experiences. It was a treasure for Flinders University historian Peter Monteith, who was researching a book on the topic. They would say, well, how's the book coming along? Are you finished yet? And so I, I felt this sense that they too uh, had reached a, a point in their lives where they wanted their stories to be told. A week ago we celebrated our 71st wedding anniversary. This week at the Torrens Parade Ground, Ralph Churches was among several ex-POWs on hand to launch the book. Also there were family members such as Ron Zvar's grandson Ronald, who now has the story of what his grandfather and his generation endured and were belatedly able to tell. And I felt at the time it was a pretty, pretty hard task, especially so late in our history. You've done it and you've done it very well. And I thank you on behalf of everyone for that. Who'd have thought bloody coffee would be so useful? Mark Sexton there.